Welcome good people to yet another video. Over the past six months, we have been traveling all over Southeast Asia with our four-year-old daughter. We set ourselves a budget of 4,000 Australian dollars per month as a family. And in today's video, we're gonna give you an update on how we've been tracking so far. Wait till the end to see if we've met our target or we have exceeded it and by how much. So let's get started. So for those who don't know us, we are Nabil and Zanesta, and we have packed up our life in Australia. Now we're slow traveling the world with our daughter, chasing our personal freedom. Few things to consider before we talk money. First of all, the budget of 4,000 Australian dollar is for a family unit, and the family unit belongs to us, which is two adults and a child. Secondly, everyone's travel comfort is different. We are not backpacking and we are also not doing luxury travel. We're doing a budget family travel and we try to maintain our living standards that we have maintained in Australia throughout this whole traveling journey. Also, we have been slow traveling, so we haven't been moving from one country to another very frequently. What we've tried to do is base ourselves in a city and then travel within that country. For the purposes of this video, all the figures here are in Australian dollars. However, we will provide three other currencies in the captions below. Lastly, we have created a comprehensive guide which you can download for free we'll put it in the link and that guide would give you an overview on how you can curate a personalized gap year for yourself as well if you're interested in the last six months we have visited three countries we've been in Malaysia for three months Thailand for two months and one month in Bangladesh so here are the categories we're gonna be covering today accommodation transport preschool for Yara food which includes eating out groceries and takeaway entertainment which also includes travel within that country and miscellaneous which includes things such as co-working space gyms and others For accommodation, for the past six months, on average, we have spent about $860. For Malaysia, it was on average $1,190. For Thailand, it was $1,389. And for Bangladesh, it was zero because we were living at our parents' place. We wanted to talk about a couple of things about accommodation. The places we chose in both Malaysia and Thailand, in and around expat locations. Usually the rent in these places are slightly higher, but we wanted to stay around the amenities as well as Yara's school. The other thing we want to talk about is renting directly from Airbnb versus renting directly from say a landlord or an agent. Initially when we started our gap year we did book through Airbnb but we soon realized that you could directly rent from an agent. One thing we did was go on to Facebook expat groups for those particular cities and reached out directly to real estate agents or landlords and we found that to be way cheaper than renting directly from Airbnb. And yes, even though they do want longer term contracts, sometimes they would give you for two to three months. So yeah, definitely do try that. For transport, we've spent $189 on average over the past six months, out of which we spent $279 in Malaysia, $242 in Thailand, and $45 in Bangladesh. Local transportation in all over Southeast Asia is very cheap, and we have used Grab all throughout these countries. For Bangladesh in particular, you will see that the expense is a bit low because we have used our parents' car as much as we could. We wanted to save some money. For Yara's preschool, on average for the past six months, we have spent $523. For Malaysia, it was $795. For Thailand, on average, it was $774. And for Bangladesh, it was zero because we were there for one month. We didn't put her in any school so that she could spend more time with her grandparents. Putting Yara in an international preschool was amazing because not only did we see great growth in her, but we were also able to focus fully on creating online business. One point we wanted to share is that the costs for these schools were actually a lot more. One of the reasons it was less for us because we collaborated with them for certain services and that's the reason why it's much lower but usually it's a lot higher than that. So what it shows is that you could actually reduce your costs on certain things. For food, we've spent $935 per month 
on average over the past six months, out of which we've spent 1,113 in Malaysia, 1,422 in Thailand, and 271 in Bangladesh. Again, the cost is lower in Bangladesh is because we stayed with our parents and we actually prefer to eat at home. Takeaways and eating out, especially street foods or in restaurants in Southeast Asia, in Thailand, Bangladesh, or Malaysia has been affordable and convenient. Whether it's takeaway or eating outside, whether in a restaurant or as a street food, it's quite affordable and also easy to get. We have eaten out most of the time, but if you do choose, you can cook, but we didn't do that because we found everything so much easy and affordable. Yeah. For the category entertainment, it also includes travel within that particular country. On average, for the past six months, we have spent about $534. For Malaysia, on average, it was $384. For Thailand, it was a whopping $1,039. And for Bangladesh, it was $179. So yeah, the excursions in Thailand was just so expensive. And most of this was in Phuket, right? So we did two... Yeah, just two. Just we did two, two excursions. Excursions. Yeah, and in the Fifi Islands, and it basically blew out our entire sort of budget. But yeah, Thailand is not cheap at all. For miscellaneous, we've got co-working spaces, gyms, and mobile phones, and everything else. So over the past six months, we have spent on average $766 per month, out of which $642 was in Malaysia, $780 in Thailand, $876 in Bangladesh. So in Malaysia, we had a gym as well as a co-working space. However, in Thailand, we didn't get a gym and we didn't get a co-working space because we were working from home and working out from our apartment. And also, I think everything was a bit expensive in yeah, Thailand. Expensive. And we shot all of our budget by doing those two excursions. Yeah. yeah, but it was worth it. But again, like, you know, it sort of threw us off a little bit. And in Bangladesh, we did go to a co-working space and it was pretty reasonable, but we spent a whole bunch of other things like for the weddings, etc., which really blew out our miscellaneous cost. But yeah, that was it. In Bangladesh, because we were saving money in other areas, we actually went a little bit overboard with miscellaneous costs and you know a lot of the things we don't quite know what we spent on so so now is the moment of truth the four thousand dollar budget for per month were we able to meet that so if we tally up the whole thing the actual monthly spending was three thousand eight hundred and seven now this particular amount is definitely below four thousand budget however this is before considering flights and visa expenses so nabil if we consider that. Yeah, so if we consider how much we spend on flights and visas, we spent $547 per month on flights. And these are international flights and visa. So that, if you add that, that takes our monthly cost to $4,353. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we didn't meet our budget. One thing to note over here is that the international flights and the visa processing fees about $500 that you mentioned. This is for the six months. Now it's very low because of two reasons. So we used a lot of points that we built over time mm -hmm. through credit cards, loyalty points for airlines. So we used as much as we could as strategically as we could in order to reduce the cost significantly. And the other point is that because we knew we were going to do a gap year, we have done a bit of a process of getting credit cards and accumulating all those points. So that's something that you could consider but if you are good in managing your finances, only then. So as you can see, we've been over around $350 per month on average. In the grand scheme of things, if you think about it, when we started, we really created this ourselves, mm. right? So we weren't 100% sure as to whether the budget that we set, whether we'll be able to meet it. So we were off by roughly 8 to 9%. So, you know, we're not... Yeah, I think daily it would be about $12, was it? Yeah, so we are around $12 
extra per day. So for three people together. For yeah. yeah. So I think that you know sometimes certain things happen. You know you're doing this for the first time. You're navigating through it. So the bottom line is you don't have to meet your target every month because different countries different. Mm -hmm. As long as at the end of the day you can average it out to the budget that you you wanted to stick. I think that's what matters. Yeah, right? that's what matters. Yeah. You tell us what you think in your comment section. We'll love to hear your thoughts as well. So don't forget to download the free guide that is linked in the description. It basically talks about the four step process that we have implemented to create this whole gap year for ourselves. Implemented and designed by ourselves. And last week we did a video around like our personal honest opinion about this whole full time travel and gap year. We'll link it for you over here. That's everything other than finance. So if you do want to check that out, do check that out. I think you will like that video if you like this video. Okay. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe. It really does help us and motivates us to continue to make videos. I hope you enjoyed this one and take care and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.